Well, hello. Good evening, good afternoon, uh, wherever you're watching this or listening to it. This is Jake with Radio Underland. Jake on the news. Today is the, what is it, the 19th and the Lord of our Savior, Jesus Christ, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, let me kick this off before these Rolling Stones get me kicked off of YouTube and everything else. Yeah, I think I'm allowed 15 seconds, but I push that to the limit and I get these warnings all the time. Good thing I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm my own voice, all right? I'm my own voice. Uh, there's another video that I put up on our uh, Instagram reel on Radio Underland, at Radio Underland on Instagram, or uh, you can watch it on Rumble. If you're looking for us on Rumble, it's Radio Underland. No no spaces, just Radio Underland, and just look for uh, Jake on the news. Uh, but I did put up this video yesterday, and it was basically of, uh, of Governor Newsom taking something that DeSantis said so far out of context, and uh, it should be criminal. It should be criminal. In fact, let me see. Let me see if I can pull up here. Let me see if I can just play a little clip of, of the first part of that video that I did. Hang on. Let me get it. I wasn't going to touch into it because I already did. But since I'm talking about it right now, uh, let me just play this because I have it already edited together. And it's a couple videos and it's a little complicated to kind of do. Um, here we go. Oh, there me. there's my pale face. Okay, watch this real quick. Gavin Newsom's new ad campaign should be criminal the way he is editing what DeSantis is saying out of Florida. I'm going to play that. I'm going to play what DeSantis really said, and I'll play Gavin Newsom's ad in its entirety. This course on black history, that is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. All right. Did you hear that? This course on black history, that is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. Let's see what he really said. This course on black history what are one of, what's one of the lessons about queer theory now who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory that is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids and now when you look at his speech in its entire context he states specifically that florida does teach black history as part of their core curriculum uh governor on the ap african-american studies course that was rejected by the state been a lot of criticism of that move, uh, people saying, you know, this is exactly what we were fearing with the individual freedom bill. I don't know if you or the commissioner could maybe expand a little bit more about sure, what was I mean, in that I think course. So, um, you know, as you know, uh, in the state of Florida, our education standards not only don't prevent, but they require teaching black history, all the important things that's part of our core curriculum. This was a separate course on top of that for advanced placement credit. And the issue is we have guidelines and standards in Florida. Uh, we want education, not indoctrination. If you fall on the side of indoctrination, we're going to decline. If it's education, then we will do this course. So when I heard it, we didn't meet the standards. I figured, yeah, they may be doing security. It's way more than that. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory. That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. And so when you look to see they have stuff about intersectionality, abolishing prisons, that's a political agenda. And so we're on, that's the wrong side of the line for Florida standards. We believe in teaching kids uh, facts and how to think, but we don't believe they should have an agenda imposed on them when you try to use black history to shoehorn in queer theory, uh, you are clearly trying to use that uh, for political purposes. Of course. Yep, there we go. All right, let's stop it. Uh, now, if you want to see the whole video of um, of Newsom's whole ad, it's kind of long. It's it's like a minute and a half long, so I'm not going to play it right now. You can definitely watch it. You can watch it on the other clip that we have on Rumble or on our Instagram, uh, but I'm not going to play it right now. But I'll tell you what, that is dirty. That is dirty, dirty, dirty politics. I mean, to, 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 take, to take his words out of context, to make him say that uh, a, a black history uh, is an agenda, uh, when that's not at all what he was talking about, that's pretty low. That's pretty low. If we're getting to the point in our politics where you can really take, I can make Biden say anything I want. I, hell, I can make anybody say anything I want with as much audio that's out there. And if we're really going to get to this point where in political ads, we're going to chop and piece together politicians to say something that they had they didn't say at all we are in trouble but this is the kind see this is the thing this is the thing this thing see see you out there listening these politicians think that you are so dumb that they can get away with that 
And we should be yelling at the rooftops to say, no, we're not going to let that fly. Now, now, hold on. Special alert, special alert. I've got this video of this alleged, 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 alleged. Let me, let me, let me sprinkle allegedly on this. Uh, there's this crazy video coming out of Washington, D.C. at this very nice uh, a park, obviously, obviously in a white neighborhood. And um, it's it's <laughs> I'm not saying it's nice because it's in a white neighborhood. I'm saying that everybody in the video, except for a couple minority children that are being almost abducted, is white. White neighborhood, white neighborhood. I mean, it's practically a white house. Anyways, I've got this video of this alleged, alleged, alleged creepy behavior coming from this old man at a park that basically just tells kids to come into his room. You think you think I'm joking and this is this is this is shocking. This is I'm in awe. I'm in awe. I think somebody should call CPS. Um but just <laughs> take a look at this video and and watch this creepy guy just just take children from parents and and and, and haul them off uh to an oval room. An oval room. That sounds weird. That sounds weird in its entirety. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, watch this. Hold, hold on. I can't get... On your last trip to Poland, what was your favorite thing there? What did you like in Poland? Really? Okay. Can we send them too? Can we send them too? All right. Go, go ahead. Can I... Yeah, can we? Do you have a seat? <laughs> I, I can go. Yeah. He's... yeah. And then we'll... Got it. Oh, look at him romantically take that little girl's hand. Uh -oh. going in I'm surprised he didn't get a sniff in right there. <laughs> Parents, would you let your kids just go off into a room with Biden? Would you allow that? Yeah, here he ditched the little boy. The little boy is just look, sitting there licking the walls as he walks by. I don't know why is this so creepy. Oh wow! <laughs> why is this so creepy? I mean, would any parent in their right mind allow their child to just go be carted off by Mr. Biden and walked into a private room? I I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sure nothing happened, but I mean, God, I think if Biden asked for me for my kid's hand and said, "Hey, come on, you want to you want to go over to the Oval Office?" I'd be like, "Not without me." Not without me, you creepy old son of a bitch. You know, it's one of those things, man. It, I get it. I get it. It's the Oval Office. It's the president. But I don't care if he's the president. I'm not letting my kid walk with him. I don't. Am, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Okay, I've got this clip. I got this clip, and instead of a porn star regretting her life choices and, and, and basically saying that she left, she gave up her whole family. Who would have seen this coming? Who would have seen this coming? Well, apparently she's seen a lot coming. Uh, anyways... This porn star, let me see, what is her name? Let me let me rewind. Porn star Riley Reed. Uh, she's talking about the fallout of her family and uh, what being in the porn uh, has done to her. And I, I think it's, I think this is one of those things where you know at first her parents supported her, her mom supported her, and it's one of those things where parents are just like, ah, oh, yeah, you can do whatever you want, you can do whatever you want, we support you. Uh, but when the 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 cock comes home to roost. Um, she's had some problems and it's, it's sad. It's unfortunate. It's that it's very sad that she's made these life choices and how they've impacted her and her relationship with her parents, with her father. Her father's apparently a minister and he doesn't even want to, well, hold on. I'll shut up because I'm just going to ruin the whole thing. I'm just going to play it and, uh, you can be the judge of what's going on here. All right. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. I've lost my whole family and it sucks. So a lot of times when people ask me if they should do porn, I tell them no. I tell them that it makes life really hard. It makes dating really hard. It makes your family life really hard. It makes intimacy hard. It, you're putting yourself out there and the world is now judging you. You have to be okay with being shamed every day of your life. I don't even want to have children because I do porn because I'm worried of the way that people will treat my child. With me personally, my mom was supportive in the beginning. She kind of just let me do whatever, that I think it was a good thing. I had a lot of freedom. As time progressed and I became successful, 
I started to feel like my mom was using me so that she could live a more luxurious lifestyle. When I started to set like these boundaries, not giving her money or things like that, it made our relationship a bit more difficult and almost toxic. And so it sucks. I don't have a mom anymore. I don't talk to her. I miss having- And she has some daddies you though. You can't rewind and you can't go back. I don't have that relationship with her anymore. I don't ever think I will. And that bums me out. Bums me out a lot. I talked to my dad and he struggles with my, my job being in the industry. He's also religious. Recently, I wanted to go visit him and he said that I, I can't go visit because his wife, my stepmom, doesn't want me there. I'm not allowed to go visit my dad anymore because my stepmom doesn't like that I do porn. But then he told me that when I was like, can we like go get coffee and like we go like get breakfast? And he's like, I don't want to be seen in public with you. And that just fucking hurt so bad. And it sucks. I lost my family. I don't talk to like my brothers or sisters. I think that they all kind of like try to take advantage of me and stuff or they're just like, my dad don't want to be around me. Oh. Well, I mean, that is kind of sad, but I mean, what do you think is going to happen when you start doing porn? I mean, I think as a father, <clears throat> even if I was in the ministry or something like that, I, I would never shun my daughter and not allow uh, her to have a, uh, coffee with me that's for sure and my my uh my my new wife my her stepmom uh i would no way in no way near allow her to say that my daughter can't come visit me because she's a porn star that being said um in today's society you start making choices in your life like that and it's not going to go it's i don't think somebody can have two identities now where they're uh n normal carol on the street and then they're, you know, Donkey Debbie on the internet and keep them separate. I think everything merges so much. Information is so widely spread. And this poor girl, she made some uh, choices. Now, you know, it, come on. It, she's wearing a white sweatshirt that says, has anybody seen my pants? Um, yeah, I, if I was her dad and she was coming to coffee with me, I'd say, no, you're taking off that sweatshirt. No, you're not taking it off and being naked right here. You're just putting on something else, you freaking whore. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah. Choices, choices that we make. I think it's crazy in here how she says that her mom supported her early on and her mom was uh, adapt to the lavish lifestyle. And then when the little porn, the little cum guzzler cut her off financially, uh, her mom didn't want anything to do with her either. Um, it's sad. It's sad. But I think I think uh, I think people need to be aware of that. There's consequences for the choices you make. And if you're going to be dicking down, uh, you know, you know, running a running a train on the Internet. It's going to have some impact on your family. Um, I feel bad for her. It just, I don't know. I just thought it, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Also, I think this is kind of interesting because apparently in the uh, LGBTQ AI 2 plus 2 equals 5, whatever, the, and, I, you know, I used to try to adapt to these acronyms, but it has changed so much in the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I, I saw the, the press secretary for the president using one set of acronyms that was different from something else that I saw. I saw that they added a number, a two plus at the beginning of it, and the A got dropped off the end. I'm at a loss. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. I need a chalkboard in front of me with the acronym for the LGBTQ AI plus. That's the one that I have in my memory, but apparently that's not right right now. But apparently in that community, um, it's, they've got a new catchphrase, uh, before I get all cunty. Cunty, cunty. I'm pretty sure that's what this uh, this fine young uh, with very fancy nails uh, person is saying in this video. Let's just take a. You, you tell me what you hear, okay? You tell me what you hear. All right, everyone. So it's Friday night. I'm getting ready to go out. This is the look. I'm mm -hmm. feeling cunt. But before I go, I'm out, feeling cunt. Got a pregame, and the only I'm feeling cunt. That's what she wait. said. I'm feeling cunt. Right? Hold on. Let's rewind that. All right, everyone. So it's Friday night. I'm getting ready to go out. This is the look. I'm feeling cunt. But before I go out, I've got a pregame. And the only way I pregame is with an ice cold Bud Light. Mm. So good. Ugh. I'm feeling Friday. cunt. All right, everyone. So it's all right, Friday. all right, all right. We got you. You're, go you're feeling cunt. You're feeling cunt. Now, am I allowed to say that you look very cunt? Like, is this a compliment now? 
I, have, I mean, I know everything changes. I, ever, I said, my, oh, my. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that out on my wife. My, oh, my, you're looking so cunt today. I'm feeling cunt. I'm feeling cunt. How many times can I say cunt before I get kicked off a rumble? I have no idea. <laughs> but I have a feeling I'm encroaching on that quota. All right. Um, Fetterman. Fetterman, one time, the, the, the Democrat nominee, Fetterman, once a time. Uh, okay. I played this video of him the other day. And just like me 10 seconds ago where I was just stumbling over words and I wasn't really making sense, Fetterman is the king of that. He is making a little bit more sense here. But why is he <clears> – <throat> what's up with this outfit? What's up with this outfit? I mean, he is a representative of, of his people that elected him. I don't know. Let's just listen to Fetterman. This is 50 seconds of Fetterman – Of I call them the Fetterman fumbles. Okay, here we go. Reason We're here for one simple reason. President Biden needs to consider using the 14th Amendment uh, if necessary. The entire GOP death ceiling negotiation is a sad charade. And that's exactly what's wrong about what's wrong in Washington. We're playing with the livelihoods of millions just so the GOP can just turn the screws against uh, hungry Americans. This is the whole reason why the 14th Amendment exists. We need to be prepared to be using it. Again, remember, say that again. We must be prepared to, in order to use it. And we cannot let reckless Republicans hold the economy as a hostage. And an unelected Supreme Court justice will try to blow up our economy. That's on them if they have to judge on that. So, thank you. You know, here for one honestly, reason. honestly, President that is Biden. some of the most put together, well thought out Fetterman Fetermanesses that I have heard. Uh, usually, he is just completely outrageous. I'm sure, not too sure what he was talking about. Uh, but the Fetterman fumble, that's actually pretty good. I give Fetterman a a a a C plus on that one. A C plus on that one. Uh, okay, now we've seen this coming. They want to they want to focus this next little clip that I'm going to play you on Hispanics only. But I think it's the nationwide. I think it's beyond just the uh, Hispanic community. But this articulate young man. Uh, and he's not young, but he is articulate. He's talking about the votes in the Hispanic community and how they're getting pissed off with all this nonsense and how the Hispanics have family values and uh, they're going by the wayside. And he's he's talking about, well, I'll just let you listen to him. I, I, I don't know why I do that, why I try to in, reinterpret the whole video when I, mean, I could just play the video. Here you go. Here you go. Spending a lot of money on these Spanish ads and boot camps for the people who work for the campaigns. Let me tell you, there is a tsunami going on within the Latino community right now. What do you mean? Uh, a tsunami. I mean, they're leaving uh, exodus out of the Democratic Party. And, and, and one of the driving forces, two things that I think, from my perspective, one of the one of it is is it's like a cultural war I think that's going on in the country at this point in history. Uh, especially with what's going on in our schools. And I think that, that, that the trans movement is just a catalyst for this. Uh, you know, the, how the curriculums in elementary schools are being embedded with over-sexualized material. And also mainstream media. Mainstream media, I think, is just too politicized, one-sided. And I think a lot of Hispanics are, are following uh, a lot of conservative voices mm -hmm. that are coming to the f are forefront. Are Republicans doing enough, though, to get the Hispanic vote? Well, I totally agree. I think that one of the faults, and I fault Republicans for doing this, they have to come out to the hood. It used to be like, you know, New York City, okay, California, is, it's assumed that it's democratic, but no. And I think that's something that a lot of people tell me, you know, I wish that they would come. Uh, Hispanics are not homogeneous. We all, and they t we tend to be conservative, especially in family values and stuff. And I think that GOP has to, has to come into the hood in, in the communities, something that the Democrats have taken for granted. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, and I think he's right. I don't, I think it's not just the Hispanic community. I think it's, uh, the, the nation as a whole. I think the nation as a whole is getting tired of all this woke shit. I think they're getting tired of all this trans shit. And, um, I don't think it's just pinpointed to Hispanics. Maybe he has his finger on the pulse of the Hispanic community because he is Latino, but I think it's uh nationwide. People are sick of this shit and there, there is going to be a shift. And, you know, I agree with him in part too, that, you know, the, the Republicans or anybody that's running against this woke nation 
they need they do need to get into the hood. They need they do need to other than just California, New York. They do they need to talk to people, and um, I think that I think the market is open for the especially for the Hispanic vote for uh, minorities, people of color. I think the market is open for that vote, but they need a they need a friend that they can relate to that's running for these offices. You know what I mean? And they're only going to get that if if politicians get out there and uh, earn that vote. You know, there's there. That's why the term is there. Earn that vote. They need to get out there and they need to shake hands. They need to talk to the muni- to the communities. They need to talk about the issues that are facing them. And I think they are willing, willing this 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 core demographic of the country that has typically been democratic. I think they're finally realizing that the Democratic Party is not offering them anything. You know, except higher tax prices, inflation, and all this other kind of stuff. I think the harvest is there, and as politicians, they need to get out there and get this. Uh, get this vote now now uh, the reparations movement is moving right along for black reparations uh, I heard some figures uh, today where there <laughs> it would cost about 13 trillion dollars 13 trillion dollars anyways Fox News is talking about it let's take a little listen here let me pull up the window if you're watching on rumble it's radio underland no spaces no dashes radio underland Jake on the news with today's date here we go let's play this in California the far left's now calling for a nationwide reparations payout squad member Cory Bush introducing a bill that would give are you ready 14 trillion dollars worth of reparations for black people who are descendants of slaves America must provide reparations if we desire a prosperous future for all. 222 million hours of forced labor, which today would be at the value of over $97 trillion. When we can send money abroad to help elsewhere, we have to make sure because we're talking about helping with things that are happening now when we did not repair what happened before. I am going to talk to you, Tom Shalhoub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 14 trillion. We're already, what, 33 trillion in debt? Yeah. Where's Newsom on this? The thing is, did, he came out strong the about the reparations. Hold on, I got two videos playing. Hold on, hold on. And we haven't heard from him, have we? He's wow. Well, yeah, he's, he's hiding. Uh, because anybody who's realistic about this knows it's a completely goofy idea. It's off the charts expensive. It's, it's not even a good idea to begin with. So, I, I, you know, it's not a budget issue. It's a bad idea. But they're not going to be able to pay for it. They can't pay for all the other stuff that's going on in California. So, no, it's a ridiculous idea. I think Gavin Newsom wanted to propose it so he could run for president. And he thought, oh, they're never going to do anything about it. And now that they are doing something, he does want to run and hide. You know, Congress, Dana, is this going to get traction in Congress? I don't care if it does. <laughs> because you know what? <laughs> Politically, this is great for Republicans, right? Yeah. Because yeah. under the Democrats' logic, one person presented a bill that would have reformed entitlement spending in the future. And that turned into all Republicans want to throw granny off the cliff and take away your Social Security and Medicare. So I think turnabout is only fair play. So all the Republicans can now say that the Democrats want to do $14 trillion of reparations and just hang it on them. Now, the White House has been very careful to say, you know, this is for Congress to decide. Right. This is for Congress. Do you really think that your base is going to let you get away with that for how long? And I just would love to see uh, that if Biden were to debate in a primary, which probably won't, but he will have to debate in 2024. This will be a great question for him to have to answer. And he will say, we will have a commission to study Yeah, it. and we know how that goes. Uh, Judge Jeanine Pirro, yes. um, Corey Bush, she's loud. She is, I guess, influential in the squad. Do how many think- is in the squad? Four? Uh, well, they added a guy. Oh, okay. Uh, does he get special privileges, by the way, if you're the only male Yeah, he gets squad? to go in the ladies' room. <laughs> 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 so, Will will this catch fire at all? No. 70% of Americans are against it. That's number one. Number two, I just listened to Cori Bush, who, by the way, Cori Bush and Rashida Tlaib, apparently they voted against a resolution to honor police officers killed in the line of duty. I mean, yeah, they're real Americans. But anyway... Um, she just said, Cori Bush, we need, what was it, $91 trillion uh, so that we can then send the money abroad. Wait a minute. I thought this was to repay you for slavery. Now, a civil war, people dying, that's not enough. We need to get the money to send it abroad for other people. No, this is absurd. What it's doing 
is it's creating the anticipation, just like uh, Newsom did. He signed the task force. He signed it when it got back. And then he comes back and he actually said, you know, this isn't really all about money. But what they're doing is they're creating division, a possibility of hope that it might happen, and then creating the division of us versus them mentality. We are owed this. And it's ridiculous. 100 percent. 100 percent. This is this is this is this is the biggest farce that's not going to happen. But they're creating that anticipation. They will do anything to regain that black vote. They will do anything to regain it. And for them to go out there with and just present this pipe dream that, oh, oh, there might be if the Democrats stay in office, there might be 14 trillion dollars that's coming our way. Yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, that is not going to happen. That is not going to happen at all. Oh man, man, it's it's a scam. It's a scam, and they think like 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 Newsom was doing in his article about DeSantis, his new ad that I talked about at the top of the show. They think the voters are so dumb that they can make any kind of promises, false promises, and just throw it out there and just keep them keep keep that keep that that population on the hook. Uh, for the elections. Anyways, uh, Disney, Disney, here, let's pull up this article. Let me get my little picture and picture going. Disney cancels a $1 billion Orlando campus among uh, the DeSantis fight. Disney Parks chairman Josh DeMauro attributed the cancellation to changing business conditions without mentioning DeSantis. Um, now uh, there was this big thing where they were moving this whole segment of Disney's employees, a lot of them in the creative department to this new, uh, billion dollar, uh, project that they were going to build in Florida. And, uh, apparently, uh, Josh DeMauro, um, just put that on hold amid its political feud, uh, with governor Ron DeSantis, Disney is dropping plans to build a nearly $1 billion corporate campus, Sounding like Fetterman, a corporate campus in Orlando's Lake Nona neighborhood that would have brought in 2000 high paying jobs to central Florida. Well, a lot of those jobs would have been relocation jobs from California, but whatever. In 2021, Disney paid forty six point four million for 58 acres that is that it planned to turn into a complex for its creative team, uh, the Imagineering and other jobs. The average salary of these positions was cited as one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. But in a memo to employees Thursday, Disney Parks chairman. Josh Diamaro attributed the project's cancellation to changing business conditions without mentioning the Walt Disney Company's escalating battle with the governor. Given, and I quote from Josh Diamaro, given the considerable changes that have occurred since the announcement of this project, including new leadership and changing business conditions, we have decided not to move forward with the construction of the campus. This was not an easy decision to make, but I believe it's the right one. Uh, that was according to Damaro. Damaro says he has hope the company plans to invest $17 billion in Florida over the next 10 years, including the addition of around 13,000 jobs. That that would still happen. Disney currently employs more than 75,000 people in the state of Florida. Um, so if you're an Imagineer and you're getting ready to you know move to that campus at Lake Nona, that's not going to happen. It looks like it looks like, oh, this was interesting. Here, let me get my face out of the way if you're watching on Rumble. Um, the police officer that was uh, she was the meme queen there for a little bit, uh, taking a train of six uh, uh, officers uh, and soiling her uh, dress blues. The police officer who slept with six co-workers accused colleague of being gay when he turned her down, because if you don't want to fuck a little dwarf face like that, you got to be gay, right? Mm -hmm. A police officer who had sex with six colleagues told one officer that he must be homosexual because he knocked back her sexual advances, according to a new lawsuit. You know, maybe it's because uh, you look like an elven boy with like really fine stringy hair. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I thought semen was supposed to be good for the hair. Maybe not. Maybe not. Tennessee officer Megan Hall was kicked out of the Laverne Police Department after it was discovered that she had slept with six officers. Apparently, they didn't give a fuck about her sexual freedom to do what she wants. But anyways, the 27-year-old police officer responded with a lawsuit claiming that she had been abused and groomed by those above her in the force, making allegations against several senior officers. However, one of those accused has now responded with allegations of his own, claiming that Hall was persistently flirting with him and pressuring him to engage in sexual relationships, despite the fact that both parties were married. Uh, so if you don't fuck me, 
you're gay, according to this very intelligent police officer. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, we've touched on this whole issue with Target and the clothing line and it being in, in kids sizes and uh, and all the stuff that's going on at Target. And we've, I've, we've talked about my speculation has been that Target won't get as bad as of a uh, um, uh, boycott as Bud Light. But it is, and I told you it would get some media, and here we go. Here, here it is. Target getting the Bud Light treatment for Pride Kids and Baby Clothing line. Uh, real Retail giant Target is under fire after footage has gone viral of a woman berating the store's latest line of Pride Kids and Baby Clothing. Uh, in the video, she is seen. Look how ridiculous this is. The woman says as she walks through the children's section of Target, according to the footage posted on Twitter, this is such bullshit. We played that video about a week ago. I told you that this would get some traction. I don't know. I don't think it's going to work, but I could be wrong. Here's another article. Target faces calls for a boycott following LGBTQ plus pride collection. Okay, back to this. LGBTQ plus. What happened to the A? LGBTQ AI plus. A and I are gone. I'm not even sure what A and I were, but they are out of the acronym. What did they do so severely to get booted out of the acronym uh, soup that is the LGBTQ plus pride collection? Oh. This article says that the retail ter- retailer Target may literally have a Target on its back right now. After releasing a collection of uh, ahead of LGBTQ plus Pride Month, Target is being criticized by conservatives for what they believe is an abandonment of its traditional customer base. According to Newsweek, people against the major retailer's support for the LGBTQ plus community are threatening to give Target the Bud Light treatment, a boycott that has recently caused a 17% decline in sales for the beer company after it celebrated transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. And I'm going to stop right there because we all know that story. There's no reason to rehash it. Um, So it is getting more media attention. Is this boycott going to stick? I have no, 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 no idea. I think it's... it's going to affect them a little bit. I I just don't think the Karens are going to give a fuck. I think the self-centered Karens, the shop at Target are just going to walk right past it and they're going to thumb their nose. They're going to put a video on their Instagram story as they go on to go buy their dove douche and all the other shit at Target that they buy. They are not. The alternative is Walmart and Karens that go to Target are not willing to go to Walmart. It's the end of the story. They're not going to give it up. They're just not. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. All right, in this article right here, it says that nearly a third of patients on gender-affirming hormones stop stop taking them. Uh, According to a military study, gender-confused females, adults much more likely to give up this dirt-cheap TRICARE benefit and study with average patient age of 19. Findings likely to help uh, the proposed bans on GOP-led states. Anyways, Republican-led legislatures and governors seeking to put the brakes on puberty blockers cross-sex hormones and surgical removal of healthy breast and genitals for gender-confused minors have a new weapon from the U.S. military. According to the U.S. military, nearly a third of transgender diverse patients who receive so-called gender-affirming hormones had stopped taking them within four years, according to a study of children and spouses of soldiers who received treatment through the U.S. military health care system. What does that tell you? That, that, what does it tell you? It tells you that with time, with time, one third of the people that were on the hormone blockers decided, oh, that's not for me. That is not for me. Now, in, in the outrageousness that is California, this article here is saying that California may, may, it's not a sure thing, may give illegal immigrants unemployment benefits despite growing budget deficit. Wouldn't that be some shit? Okay. Illegal immigrants residing in California may soon be able to collect weekly unemployment benefits as the legislature considers a new bill following the end of Title 42. This is a Senate bill. Senate Bill 227, titled the Safety Net for All Workers Act, would guarantee laid off undocumented individuals $300 per week for up to 20 weeks. The Los Angeles Board of Supervisors, the Los Angeles Board of Supervisors unanimously voted two months ago to adopt a resolution in support of the legislation. The Safety Net for All Coalition, man, I am fettermaning it up today. The Safety Net for All Coalition, a group of California organizations fighting for additional welfare programs for illegal immigrants, 
estimated that the unemployment program would cost approximately $356 million in state funds, but argued that undocumented workers contribute $485 million per year to the state's unemployment insurance system. So it'd be a wash. I don't know if this is going to happen. We got to keep our eye out for Senate Bill 227. Undocumented Amer- undocumented people living in the United States getting unemployment benefits. Ah, man. Come on. We could we could, we could send that money to reparations, do some. We could send that money to reparations and uh at least, you know, start make it make a down payment at least. Come on. Come on. Uh, let's see. The Supreme Court gives the IRS green light to seek bank records without notice. And this is a big one. The Supreme Court ruled unanimously that the Internal Revenue Service doesn't have to notify bank account holders before requesting their records if efforts are geared toward collecting someone else's delinquent taxes. Once again, there is one layer of our privacy that is going by the wayside. Uh, The IRS is given broad authority under tax code section 7609C2D, which exempts the agency from giving notice when a summons is issued to help collect a tax assessment against the person with respect to whose liability the summons is issued, according to the unanimous high court. So the Supreme Court is backing the IRS to snoop around in your bank accounts. And if you're hiding somebody in there, they will find it and they will grab it. And they don't have to let you know that they're taking a look. Huh. <laughs> if they see, I wonder I wonder how far this is going to go. Are they just going to like set up this permanent thing and anybody that has a balance over $10,000, they're just going to like monitor everybody? Just monitor I don't know, man. It's it's I don't know. It's privacy going the way of the going the way of the dodo bird. San Francisco. San Francisco has some major poop problems. It's been going on there forever, especially at the Westfield San Francisco Center. It's a mall, and they're claiming that it's at least twice a week now that a poop, a poop is appearing in the elevators. What a shitty story, man. People have been pooping in elevators at the Westfield San Francisco Center Mall, and the frequency of the problem has reportedly picked up. It's like twice a week now. It used to be once a month. Uh, according to Abimo Garcia, who manages janitors at the mall. Uh, but now they're saying it's about twice a week. Garcia believes people poop in the elevators because they are the nearest semi-private area to Mission Street, where there are often individuals camping, according to the outlet. Several workers indicated the only routinely utilized public bathrooms at the mall are located on the second floor. And it's a long way to the bathrooms for Mission Street, Gar- Garcia remarked. Um, so yeah, you shit in an elevator, just hit the panic button, stop it midway. I wonder if it's one of those elevators with like a glass on one side where people can actually watch you shit from down below. That would be interesting. It doesn't really say that. I don't know. I don't know, but they're really complaining about people pooping in the elevators in San Francisco. Well, you know, uh, San Francisco has made their bed and they can sleep in it because it's a shit show and they got shit in the elevators to prove it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to skip that story. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let's go to this one. This is lighthearted and, and fun and, and happy and happy. This is Dolly Parton. She's under fire for a collaboration with Kid Rock on her um, upcoming rock album. I'm done with her. Hmm. Uh, Dolly, the mistress of massive memories. Uh, let's see. Let's see. She was nominated for induction to the rock and roll hall of fame. Uh, she decided to take herself out of the consideration. Yeah, I remember doing that story. Uh, anyways, what is the song? What is the song? I want to know the song. Uh, okay, here we go. But one rock collaboration in particular is drawing attention and has fans upset. A kid rock collaboration, that is. The album features a song called Either Or, which is a collaboration with with the ever polarizing kid rock. And it seems that some of Dolly's fans aren't happy about her choice to work with them. According to this, I'm looking at some uh, Twitter posts. Dolly Parton, no. Why are you working with Kid Rock? He's literally the exact opposite of you. Yes, he is male. She is female. Fans are upset that Dolly, who has generally avoided political statements, would collaborate with Kid Rock, who has been outspoken on many political issues, including his support for Donald Trump, and most recently his anger at Bud Light for partnering with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, let's see another tweeter here. Another tweet says just found out Dolly Parton's upcoming rock album involves guests like Peter Frampton, Sting, Stevie, uh, Nicks, Elton John and Kid Rock question mark. Dolly, you put the guy who shot Bud Light cans in the same album as Sir Elton John. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I haven't heard the song yet. 
I'm not going to play it because I don't want to get kicked off of everything again. Uh. All right, Caitlyn Jenner, The Voice. Now, this this always blows my mind. Caitlyn Jenner, who is the voice of anti-trans. Caitlyn Jenner is the most anti-trans, transgender person uh, that I know and I'm sure that she, he gets labeled as so, but Caitlyn Jenner rips transgender woman in a sorority. Uh, sisters, the sisters in the house are living in constant fear. What did the spokesperson against transgender, the transgender Caitlyn Jenner said? She said, Caitlyn Jenner is back in the University of Wyoming sor- sorority sisters who claim they're being menaced by a transgender member in their house. Caitlin is sounding off about the Kappa Kappa Gamma sisters suing their sorority for letting 21-year-old Artemis Langford join their chapter last year. In the suit, the women say they now live in constant fear in our home because they allege the 6-foot-2, 260-pound Artemis gets physically aroused around them. Now, that is against the rules. If you're trans and you have your dick tucked, you can't be popping a boner around your sorority sisters. That is just wrong. I'm with Caitlin on this. Caitlin made her views clear, tweeting, the person is not a true trans. They are sexually deviant perv who hangs around female sorority watching young women undress with a visible erection. I agree. I agree. Unless it is a massive clit. It could be a massive clit. I'm not going to judge. Oh. Uh. Caitlin goes on to refer to Artemis as a male, calling them a mentally disturbed person. Caitlin also puts a good chunk of the blame on the sorority for letting Artemis into the sisterhood, calling on others to either drop out of their chapters or refuse to join in solidarity. Oh, we've got a video of Caitlin. Let me get my face out of the way and let's let's actually listen to what the former Olympian has to say uh, about this whole issue. I'm pretty sure I just read it all here. Yeah, TMZ. You know what, if you look at those pictures, what I have to say is he is a perverted, sexually deviant male. I'm sorry, Artemis Langford, you're not a woman and you do not belong in women's spaces. Um, You know, I was listening to uh, Fox News the other night, and Clay Travis, I think, put it just perfectly. He says, living in this woke world, equality really, really has become inequality. And it's so true because the women are not being protected here. And um, that is a shame. Um, You know, I've been fighting this woke world uh, for a long time. Uh, Obviously, in sports, we, we know how that's been going for the last couple of years, trying to protect women's sports and now in a sorority. And, you know, you got to fight back all this BS every day, tooth and nail. I mean, let's look at this case. Um, When the case was originally filed, not against the university, but against the the state organization for the sorority, Kappa Kappa Gamma, um, they put it in as a John Doe because they didn't want to expose themselves to the kickback. And boy, I know how that is. I get it all the time and I don't blame the women. But unfortunately, the judge says, no, if you're going to do this lawsuit, you have to put your name out there. And so it has been extraordinarily different on the girls. I am so proud of them for being able to see them. They're articulate, great representatives for the women in in college. And uh, I applaud them and uh, I hope they win their case, you know. And the ACLU is coming to um, the transgender, the biological male's defense. This is the ACLU um, responding to the lawsuit saying, quote, all young people should have the freedom to live their lives openly and honestly in a supportive community. Transgender women are no different and deserve the same dignity and respect as every other student. We've got a few seconds left, Caitlin. Look at the picture. They're no different. They are. This is a, I said at the beginning, a sexually um, perverted man. I mean, he's, they, they have, the women are so uncomfortable being, this is a women's space, and the women are so uncomfortable with them in his space. And, um, you know, they can see him. He's got an erection. Uh, he's eyeing the girls. Um, this is wrong. Um, society, we have to protect women. And uh, this is not about the woke world. This is about protecting women. And honestly, the last call to action I have, I want young women um, to get either 
pull out of uh, this sorority, uh, Kappa Kappa Gamma. Um, the only way you're really going to get any results is if everybody gets behind these women. Um, and that's by far the most important thing. So um, the entire country has to get behind these women. It's the only way we're going to get any change because there is strength in numbers. Boom, 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 boom. And to the ACL and to the ACLU, who says there's no difference between a trans woman and a uh, and a, uh, and a and a and a regular woman. I dare to differ. I think that the one of the big differences was the erection that he was running around the sorority house with. I think that is a pretty big difference between a trans woman and a uh, regular woman. I think I think uh, boners, boners. Yeah, I'll just leave it at boners. Boners are a difference. One hundred percent. Boners are a difference. I'd call me Captain Obvious. Call me Captain Obvious. But uh, boners would be one of the major differences. It'd be probably the first one I point out in that situation uh, of the difference between trans women and women. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> this is this is a this is a, 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 a I don't even know why I want to do this story. I don't even want to. I haven't shown it on the screen yet, so I can get away with not doing it. Um, well, fuck it. Let's do it. Um, so this is all about this OnlyFans, OnlyFans chick that, uh, is shocked to find out that her stepdad is one of her biggest fans. Okay. So this is going to be a clusterfuck. Let me unmute this and then let me, uh, uh, re rewind this. Click here to unmute. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, let's go back. Talk about family trauma. Uh, family trauma. Wait, hold on. Let me refresh this. So it rewinds. Give me a second. We've got this killer stellar video of... Oh, now we've got to watch an ad. My Here we go. My stepdad was my top subscriber on my naughty website. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Oh, stepdad fantasy, could have made content from it, blah, blah, blah. This man had been in my life since I was 11 years old and spent $2,000 on custom content every single video that I sent out. When I caught him, he denied it to all of his friends and obviously my mum got rid of him straight away but yeah if you want to talk about family trauma my stepdad watched me have sex with my partner for two months wow supportive dad or a creepy stepfather i <laughs> I mean, what was this guy doing? He must have had like an alias email or something, and somehow she found out. What a weirdo, dude. Dudes are so creepy. But I it's stepdaughter, they're not biologically related, but still, he raised her. Give me a friggin' break. Oh my God. I have no comment on that. I have no comment on that. There was an incident within our district that occurred recently regarding a transgender woman who really is a bio biological man having an altercation with a young woman at MLK High School. It was infuriating when I had seen the video on social media, but what was detrimental to this is the fact that this man is and has been using the women's restroom and locker room. That was California high school student Megan Simpkins calling out her school board over its transgender policies. She says the district allowed a student who is biologically male to use the women's locker room, which led to an assault against a female student. And so she spoke out and she joins us now. Megan, thank you for being here today. Uh, walk us through your decision process. You saw the video. You used to be a student there and you decided you had to say something. Yes. Um, although I was, I'm no longer currently a student at MLK High School, I believe that as a woman, a real woman, biologically, down to my DNA, I have XX chromosomes, I have the capacity to give birth, I menstruate. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're a male or a female, because those are the only two genders there ever are, there are and will ever be. But because, sorry, but because of this incident, the safety of women is being jeopardized ultimately. And we were, we're actually at the, cap the Capri for humiliation, you know, degradation and, de and dehumanization because the school board is basically telling us women specifically that, you know, it doesn't matter that you were born a female. It doesn't matter. This male can have uh, male genitalia and it doesn't matter. He can just claim to be a female and therefore it's a-okay to just enter women's spaces despite how the majority of women feel about that. Do you, has it, how, what have you, the feedback you've received, I'm sure you've had blowback from people saying that they're against what you said, but have you heard from 
students who might have said thank you because they might be afraid to speak up for themselves? I have not heard that personally. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people at my school have not really recognized me. I have had two students come up to me and say that, hey, you really spoke out um, on the behalf of women. We're proud of you. You go. But on a personal level, I have not I've received mm -hmm. a lot more um, a lot more hate, a lot more mm -hmm. criticism. I mean, I've been called a white supremacist. I've been called a bigot, you know, transphobic. And, you know, it's you know, if, if apparently telling the truth that a male will always be a male and a female will always be a female. And therefore, you are supposed to be going to either a male or female um, space then I guess I am a transphobe, then I guess I am a bigot, because if that is how you see me, then I cannot change how you, because the school board is basically- All right, all right, all right, enough of that. That's not the article I was wanting to pull up, but I, rec I recognize this right away. I mean, that was a big fight that was publicized. I don't have it at my fingertips right now, uh, but there was this MLK, Martin Luther King High School in Riverside. Uh, there was a viral video that went around, and I didn't even realize, I just thought it was a dude beating up a chick, like beating the shit out of her. And I had no idea uh, when I first saw the video that the male that was beating up the female identified as transgender. But it was like a clusterfuck and it's been all over the news. That's not what I was going to play. I wanted to read this actual article that the L.A. Dodgers um, cave and eject the anti-Catholic group from the LGBTQ pride event after backlash. Now, this this group is like a satirical Catholic group. Uh, let me bring up my thing. Ba -boom, ba -boom. The Los Angeles Dodgers officially removed a left wing group of so-called trans nuns, trans nuns from their Pride Night honoree list after religious groups raised concerns the event would facilitate anti-Catholic hate. The Major League Baseball team announced that it would be honoring the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, which is a group of queer and trans nuns. They were going to honor these people who's who in their right mind was making these choices during a June 16th event, but quickly received backlash from religious groups for the decision given the history of the anti-Catholic message and shocking performances. This year, as part of a full night of programming, we invited a number of groups to join us. We are now aware that our inclusion of one group in particular, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, in this year's Pride Night has been the source of some controversy the Dodgers wrote in a statement released Wednesday. The team announced it would no longer be honoring the group during the upcoming LGBTQ event. Given the strong feelings of people who have been offended by the sisters' inclusion in our evening and in an effort not to distract from the great beliefs benefits that we've seen over the years of Pride Night, we are deciding to remove them from this year's group of honorees, it said. It, it says no mention here if everybody gets free Bud Light at the game. Uh, but, oh, here's a nice picture of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Uh, I'll have none of that. Thank you. None of that. Get the, get, but pardon the pun. Pardon the pun. Uh uh, let's see, on Tuesday, religious advocacy uh, group Catholic Vote called out the Dodgers and urged them to rethink the decision in order to honor a blatantly perverted, sexual, and disgusting anti-Catholic hate group. Uh, yeah. I, hey, you know, like Marco Rubio says down here, for once, common sense prevailed in California. And yeah, big up to the Dodgers for using some com common sense that if they're going to be anti-Catholic and most of your fans are Hispanic for the Dodgers, uh, you can, you can, I've, I've, I've fact checked that by the amount of, uh, LA Dodgers tattoos that go on Brown Hispanic skin. It's factual. It is a, it's a good judge of who's in the audience at the Dodger stadium and lots of Catholics. And if you're going to have these trans, Ladies of perpetual indulgence, it was a good idea to get rid of them. Anyways, this has been Jake on the news on the 19th of, I don't even know what month this is, but anyways, be safe, be good. Um, what words of wisdom can we have from this? I'm looking back at these stories. Oh yeah. Don't let your kids just wander off in Washington, DC with some random guy and, and lead him and lead them into a white house, into an oval room. That's just weird. Just don't do that, okay? All right, this is Jake with the news. I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Good night, good evening, good morning, whatever. Enjoy your day. Later.